This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. October 6th. It was fair in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Robbery Homicide Division. The boss is Captain Hugh Brown. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. We were checking out a 211, armed robbery at a small neighborhood grocery store. The victim was sure he remembered what the holdup man looked like down to the smallest detail. The description could fit almost anyone. touch something but I told you he didn't believe me I know I never took my eyes off him he's getting away while you waste time in here you ought to be out chasing him getting my money back what do you think I pay taxes for I gave you a perfect description he's five foot nine or ten grayish black hair medium build not fat not thin his eyes are brown his nose is straight he combs his hair with a part on the side now you go out and find a guy just like that and you'd like us to arrest him when we do well, certainly I would. Afraid we've got a problem here. What do you mean by that? Well, that description fits you, too. Sergeant, just came in over the air. Call your office. Right, thanks. Said it was important. A woman named Jean Sawyer had telephoned. She said she knew who the man was that held up the grocery store. 2.30 p.m. She lived in the immediate neighborhood. We drove over to see her. What do you want? Jean Sawyer? That's me. We're police officers. This is Bill Gannon. Oh, yeah, I've been waiting for you. Come right in. You want to know who held up that grocery store, don't you? Well, I can tell you, and I can tell you where to find him. Two blocks down and two blocks north. Would you give us his name, please? His name is John. J-O-H-N. John what? What do you mean, John what? John Sawyer, he's my husband. Well, you're telling us that your husband held up that grocery store? You bet I am, and once you've met the bum, you'll understand why. How's that? He's a bum, he's no good. Wastes his time fixing things, fools around with a dune buggy. I tell you, I wonder why I ever married that guy. Me, who had a chance at a lawyer once, a doctor another time, men with real money. Well, now, what makes you think your husband held up that store? I don't think it, I know it. I could have told you months ago it had happened. He talked about it? Well, not in so many words, but he did say once he was going to put that store out of business someday. Well, how'd you know it was going to be today? I didn't know it was going to be today. One of my neighbors passed the place just after it happened. As soon as he told me about it, I knew John had done it. Why, you can't imagine how glad I am I walked out on that bum last month. He doesn't live here. Are you kidding? I ran out on him bag and baggage. Threw my wedding ring in his face and left that house for good. I was married to that crumb for six years. That's all the trouble anybody should take. Now, you go on over there and you look around. You'll find everything he stole in five minutes. I'm afraid we don't have enough probable cause to conduct a search. Well, I told you he did it. He'll say he didn't. We've got to have more than just your word. What do you mean, more? Since when is the word of an honest citizen no better than an ex-con's? He's an ex-convict? He just got out of San Quentin last fall. What did he do time for? Armed robbery. What else? Three forty p.m. John Sawyer lived on North Sycamore Street, five blocks from the grocery store that had been held up. Hi. What can I do for you? You need something fixed, you brought it to the right place. You John Sawyer? That's right. And if I can't fix it, nobody can. Police officers, this is Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Hey, I'm clean. Ask my P.O. You've been here all day? Yeah, that's right. Never left the place. Can you prove that? Well, why? What's to prove? A grocery store at 4th and Beverly was just knocked over. 4th and Beverly? Sam Golden's? You know the place, do you? 
Sure do. I hope they hit Sam real good. Why do you say that? Oh, that's a long story. We got the time. That wife of mine sent you, didn't she? Sure she did. How about that? Jean finally kept her word about one thing anyway. How do you mean that? She said she'd nail me. She swore she'd get even. Get even for what? Kicking her out. I showed her the door and told her not to come back. She's a drunk, not an alcoholic, just a plain lush. I didn't mind it before I went to the joint, but after, well, I tried to stop it. Even asked Sam Golden to quit giving her all that booze on credit. Told him I wouldn't pay the bills. She worked for a friend of his, so he knew he'd always get his money. Did you ever say you were going to put him out of business? Gene told you that, too, huh? I put up with her as long as I could, and then I threw her out. She's been passing it around. She'd make trouble for me. And you figure she's doing that now, do you? If she says I pull that stick up, certainly she's doing that. But you got no way of knowing if that's the truth or not. That's right. You don't seem to have an alibi, and you do fit the general description. Well, all right, search the place. Bring in a whole crew if you want. You can start with the garage out back. All right, we'll do that. Sure, go ahead, help yourself. I guess it won't mean much, but there ought to be some way I can prove I'm clean. There is. What's that? Come downtown for a show up. Before we left, we gave Sawyer's entire premises a thorough search. We found nothing that would in any way implicate him in the robbery of the grocery store. October 7th, 11 a.m., John Sawyer was advised of his rights and voluntarily appeared in a show up. Sam Golden was asked if he recognized anyone in the line as the holdup man. The other men who appeared in the show up were prisoners from Central Jail. Sam Golden was positive that John Sawyer was not the man who held him up. Well, I'm sure glad it cleared the air. Yeah, so are we, and thanks for your cooperation. I can't say I wasn't worried. Yeah, we can understand that. You know, mistakes can happen, and Golden knew me once. He might have thought I looked familiar. We considered that. Well, I sure hope you get the guy that really did it. We're gonna try. Well, I guess I better get moving. I got a long list of things to do today. You know what's right up at the top, don't you? What's that? A short talk with that loving ex-wife of mine. October 13th, 11, 10 a.m. The captain wanted to see us. Tell me about it, Joe. Last week, that grocery store robbery. The week before that, a restaurant. This morning, a supermarket. The M.O. is the same in each case. So is the description. Could fit anybody. You think it's the same man? Yes, sir. That's how we make it, Captain. All right, I'll put two more teams on it. They'll work separately, but you'll coordinate. Yes, sir. Go over the old ground again, take a second look at everything, retrace your leads. Right. Next time I open this file, there's one thing I'd like to see on top. Yes, sir. The arrest report. Brown. Yes, right here. It's for you, Friday. Thank you. This Friday. The supermarket. Well, yes, ma'am. If the newscaster gave a description... Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, now, you told us the same thing last week, and we... We had no reason to arrest him, Mrs. Sawyer. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, we'll do that. Thank you very much for calling. Mrs. Sawyer again. Heard about the supermarket job on the radio. Claims her husband did it. We checked it out last time. Hit a blank wall. Check it out again. This time there might be a door in it. October 13th, 4.40 p.m. John Sawyer agreed to appear in another show up. The cashier from the supermarket failed to identify him. 10 days went by, October 23rd, 10.40 a.m. A service station had been held up the night before. Bill and I drew the case, and we filled out the reports. Well, what are you going to do about it? Do about what, Mrs. Sawyer? The service station hold up last night. You wouldn't listen to me the last time or the time before that. Now this happens. Now, Mrs. Sawyer, we are. Are you going to let him get away with this one, too? No, ma'am, he hasn't gotten Instead away. Instead of sitting here, you ought to be out there picking him up. We've already picked him up twice, Mrs. Sawyer. And let him go twice, an ex-con. What are you doing? Wait until he holds up everything in the city? He's an ex-con. Go out and get him. Now, having a record doesn't mean a man's guilty, Mrs. Sawyer. Maybe you just can't be bothered. It's too much trouble to arrest him. You'd have too many forms to fill out. Mrs. Sawyer, if you'll just listen a minute. I've heard about cops like you. Collect your pay and do as little as you can. Well, I told you people a dozen times, John pulled those stick-ups. No, ma'am, he didn't. You're lying. We have the man in custody who held up that gas station last night. He was picked up this morning, and we have two good witnesses. Well, what about those other stick-ups, the supermarket and the grocery store? The man we picked up confessed to both of those. I don't believe it. I just can't. Oh, yes, ma'am, you can. You just won't. Give me my paper.
October 24th, 2.10 p.m., we received another 2.11 call. A dry cleaning establishment had been held up. Carl Freeman from Leighton Prince arrived soon after we did. He checked the place over while we talked to the clerk. I'm telling you, it was just terrible. I'm going to have nightmares about it. All right, would you start at the beginning and tell us everything you remember? Well, I was just checking some invoices, doing my job, you know? And I had them all mixed up, so I spread them out on the counter. Well, I had just started to sort them out when I heard the door open, so I looked up. And what did you see? It was his face. I've never seen anything like it. I didn't know what to do. I just froze. It was awful. Would you describe the man, please? Well, in a way, his face was all mashed in. The nose was pushed flat a little, and the hair, what I could see of it under his hat, was pressed flat. And so were his lips a little. Stocking mask. A what? Probably wore a woman's stocking pulled down over his head. It distorts the features. Could you tell what color his hair was? No, not really. All I could see was that face. Well, you say he wore a hat. What did it look like? Do you remember? No, I don't. I, I didn't really notice. Did he wear a jacket, a windbreaker, or a sweater? It was a jacket. Yes, that's what it was, just an ordinary jacket. Some dark color, I think. What about his voice? Anything unusual there? He sounded hoarse. I could hardly hear him. It was just a whisper, really. What did he say? Well, nothing at first. Then he pointed the gun at me and said, open the cash register. But I couldn't move. I couldn't even scream. Now, do you remember what kind of a gun he had? Oh, I don't know anything about guns. All right, did it look like this one? Yes, exactly. Only it was longer. You mean this part, the barrel? Yes, if that's what you call it. 38 blue steel revolver. Oh, it was just awful. But do you know what the worst part was? No, ma'am, what was that? When he started to reach across the counter, I thought he was reaching for me. I remember something. I did notice something. What was that? His right wrist. When he reached across the counter for the money, part of his wrist showed. I, I mean, the sleeve pulled up the way they do, you know. Yes, ma'am, go on, please. Well, I'm not sure. I don't know what it was. It was a, a mark of some kind. Can you describe it? It was red, sort of. I thought it was blood at first, but it couldn't have been now that I think about it. It was a straight line, or the bottom end of one, about as thick as a pencil, maybe a little thinner. Now, you say it was red. Yes, I'm sure of that. It was red, all right. Could it have been a scar? Oh, no, it looked more like something that was drawn on, paint or something. A tattoo? That's right. It could have been part of a tattoo. Joe, as soon as I print the girl for elimination, I'm all through here. Did you do any good? A couple of good ones, a few partials, some smudges. I'll run the elimination as soon as I get back to the office. Right. Sarge, just came in over the air. You'll call this number right away. Thank you. Let me guess. Gene Sawyer. You called it. Carl, when you run those prints, check them against John Sawyer's, will you? What's that L.A. number? 11805. Will do. Thanks. Well, now, that should satisfy her. Don't you make book on it, pal. October 25th, 10 a.m., we had an M.O. check runoff. The report showed a couple of dozen possibilities. As a disguise, a stocking mask was nothing unusual. Robbery homicide, Gannon. You'll recognize the voice. This Friday. Yes, Mrs. Sawyer? Yes, ma'am, we know, but we might not have to pick him up. No, ma'am, we're checking the fingerprints right now. Yes, ma'am, we know he was convicted of harm. Mrs. Sawyer, we... Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we are grateful when a citizen calls... Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now, if he's guilty, we won't let him get away with it. What's that? Yes, ma'am, that's a promise. All right, thank you for calling. Goodbye. You know something, Joe? What's that? I've been keeping track. That's the 11th time she's called in 19 days. Gentlemen. Carl, what do you got? The good prints belong to the girl. Yeah. I got one readable partial. Were you able to make it? Oh, yeah, thanks to Joe's hunch. What do you mean, my hunch? Print belongs to John Sawyer. Freeman gave us a rundown of his print comparison. Now, this is a blow-up of Sawyer's right index fingerprint. This is the partial print I lifted from the cash register. The ridge characteristics are quite clear. Both prints are ulna loops. How many points were you able to make, Carl? I'll give you what I've got. Look at this clockwise bifurcation. Notice its location. Now look at the other print. The same kind of clockwise bifurcation is located in the identical place. Point one. 
Notice this ending ridge now. It compares with a similar ending ridge in this print. Point two. This island matches the island over here. Point three. And this enclosure is identical in shape and location with this one. That's four. Now notice the size and location of this short dot ridge. Then look at this one. Twins. Five. Then there's this anti-clockwise bifurcation over here and a similar one here. That's six. All right, six points. That's all? The print's only a partial. Well, one thing's sure, it tells us Sawyer's our man. That it does, but six points won't prove it in court. No, nope. it still takes ten. 12.20 p.m., we drove over to talk to John Sawyer. Hi. Don't tell me she's at it again. What is it this time, another supermarket? Dry cleaning store. I'm sorry about all this. I told her off real good last time, but I guess it didn't help. Shall I go get my coat? What for? To go downtown for a short. No, not this time. He wore a mask. That makes it tough. How do you mean? For me to prove I'm clean. You can search the place again if you want. Turn it upside down if that'll prove anything. You know I don't mind. I'll do anything you want. I got nothing to hide, and I want to prove it. I have to. I sure don't want my P.O. to violate me. All right, we'll put it down that way. Thanks. I really appreciate it. What'd you do, cut yourself there? Huh? Where? Right there on your wrist. Looks like a cut. Oh, that? No, that's just a tattoo. The guy who did it was stoned. He not only put it on backwards, he made the flagpole red. Some job, huh? Sure fools a lot of people. It's really surprising. What's that? How many people notice it? One fifty p.m. Like John Sawyer's partial fingerprint, the tattoo on his wrist would not be conclusive enough for the district attorney to file on. We needed something solid. The stolen money, the gun used in the commission of the holdup. At any rate, whether John Sawyer's wife had been right or not, he was now a prime suspect in the latest holdup, the dry cleaning store. Bet you think I'm surprised you're here, but I'm not. You boys like a drink? No, thanks. On duty and all that, huh? Thanks, just the same. I knew you'd wise up sooner or later. It's the way you people operate. It's always the same. You waste time going out of your way to overlook the obvious. You ignore anything right in front of you. You gotta come around to it in your own way, in your own time. We'd like to talk to you about your husband. Oh, now you'd like to talk to me. How many times have I told you to lock him up? But would you listen? No, you gotta do your own thing. You gotta go through your own routine. You gotta get all fouled up in miles of red tape. Well, now, most of what you call red tape, Mrs. Sawyer, is to protect your rights. That's what I mean. That's it exactly. You look at both sides of everything so much, you don't know which way is up anymore. Take my case. How many times did I tell you to arrest my husband? A few. Well, did you? No, you did not. We didn't believe he was guilty at that time. Well, you want to arrest him now, don't you? If we find enough evidence. There you go again. I keep telling you he did it, and you keep talking about evidence. You wouldn't believe your own eyes if you saw him stick up that dry cleaner and walk right out with the money in his hand. Now, Mrs. Sawyer, you told us that he owns a dune buggy, is that right? Yeah. He's got a dune buggy, all right. Well, now, when we checked out his garage, it wasn't there. Well, it shouldn't be there. That's not where he keeps it. Well, where does he keep it? What do you want to know that for? You think he'd be dumb enough to use a dune buggy for his getaway car? That question's too dumb even to answer. Where does he keep the car, Mrs. Sawyer? You mean to tell me you haven't checked on this before? We haven't had any reason to until now. What do you think you're gonna find at that place where he stores his dune buggy? Enough evidence to charge him with that cleaning store holdup, maybe. Oh, why didn't you say so in the first place? I would have told you right off. I want to see that bum in jail where he belongs. He rents an old shed. Where is it located? Near the freeway across town. He keeps his dune buggy there. That way, he doesn't have to tow the thing all the way through traffic. He spent more time with that thing than he ever did with me. Exactly where is this shed located? Do you have the address? I don't know offhand. It's in some alley. Well, now, how do we locate it? Follow him. Tomorrow's Sunday. He'll be taking the buggy out to the desert. You'll have to get up early, though. He leaves around 7. Just follow him. He'll lead you right to it. Well, now, wouldn't it be simpler if you just gave us the address? All right. I'll make a deal with you. I'll give it to you if you'll do something for me. And what's that? Just be sure and tell him I sent you. October 26th, 6.30 a.m. We drove over to East Los Angeles where John Sawyer kept his dune buggy. He was already there when we arrived. 
What are you guys doing here? Just stand still, keep those hands in plain sight. Look, you guys checked me out yesterday. Something new came up. All right, I want you to listen carefully to your rights. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak with an attorney and to have the attorney present during questioning. If you so desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be appointed for you without charge before questioning. Now, do you understand each of these rights I've explained to you? Yes, I do. Okay, if we look around? Yeah, sure, but you'll just be wasting your time. We don't mind. It's Sunday. You don't want to waste it like this. You ought to be outside or something, in the mountains or in the desert. That's where I'm going. I'm supposed to meet some guys. We have to check this place out first. What for? You're wasting your time. How would you like to save some of it for us? Well, how? There's nothing here you can see for yourself. Must take you quite a while to get enough air in that balloon tire with that old-fashioned tire pump. I just use it for emergencies. You guys got me all wrong. Just because that ex-wife of mine is trying to make me look bad, you're here leaning on me. What is it you want, anyway? The gun you used and the money you stole on that holdup. When are you going to stop believing Gene and believe me? Just as soon as you give us a reason to. Now, you know if we have to, we can take this dune buggy of yours apart piece by piece. Now, without a warrant, you can't. We can get one. You never talked about a warrant before, Sawyer. You wanted us to search your house. Now, have you got something here you didn't have there? Okay, in that spare wheel inside the tire, the gun and the money. You'd have found it anyway. You guys are pretty smart. You spotted the tire pump. Which wheel is it? The outside one. It's all Jean's fault. She's the one you ought to bust. Well, now, how do you figure that? She kept turning in false alarms, didn't she? And you kept checking me out and finding me clean. That's right. Well, that's how I figured. Well, how did you figure? As long as Jean kept calling you, you had to think I was clean this time, too. <laughs> October 26th, 10.30 a.m. John Sawyer signed a confession. We finished filling out the reports. What is the big idea? You locked my man up. That's right, we did. Well, now, you had no business doing that. Let him go. How's that? You heard me. Let him go. He's completely innocent. Mrs. Sawyer, we... He is innocent. He wouldn't pull another stick up, not after going to prison the last time. Not my Johnny. I ought to know. You listen to me. No, ma'am, we listened to you before. Now, you kept saying he was guilty, didn't you? Sure I did, but I didn't mean it. I was just giving him a hard time. He had it coming to him. You had no business believing me. We didn't. Well, forget everything that happened before. Just listen to me now. Johnny's innocent. Let him go. He had the stolen money in his possession. He turned the hold-up gun over to us, and he signed a full confession. Oh, that big dumb fool. I would never told you about that dune buggy. How was I to know he'd really try another stick-up? I just wanted him back. He ignored me. I was trying to get him back. I didn't know it'd turn out this way. And it's all your fault that it did. You're to blame for this whole stinking mess, both of you. Well, how do you figure that, Mrs. Sawyer? Well, you shouldn't have paid any attention to me. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On December 22nd, trial was held in Department 184, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The court found the suspect guilty of 211 PC, first degree robbery, which is punishable by imprisonment from five years to life. 